Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about assignment 2-2, your page composition activity. So you're creating your basic magazine page file for your final project. So if you haven't already, make sure you review the LinkedIn learning tutorials on Adobe Photoshop basics and Adobe Illustrator basics, especially the one for Adobe Illustrator as this is what we're going to be using for the, the magazine ad. Um, I know a lot of students often tell me they're a little bit intimidated by Illustrator because of the capabilities of it, but for this class, we're basically going to be using it to create a page layout. So um, we'll get into that a little bit, but um, just as we click into the rubric, just so you know, everything that you'll need for this particular assignment, you're going to be setting up the first of your magazine ad files um, for your final project. You'll create an eight and a half by 11 illustrator file with three layers. You'll have a background layer filled with any solid color, a second layer containing only a vector image of the client logo, and a third layer with one of the masked images that you imported from the image processing activity. And just so you're not confused about this, I think that this is a misprint. This number three, it says a third layer with one of two imported masked images. Just so you know, it's just that one that we did in the last assignment. So the um, image masking assignment, you'll want to use that image here. So if you haven't already, make sure you are downloading the Amethyst Bay Style Guide. So you'll just want to download it, make sure you save it um, to wherever you have your project file saved. Um, you'll open the style guide in Illustrator, just going to file and select open, um, navigating to where you have this, the style guide saved. I have it saved, so I am going to just right click to open with Adobe Illustrator. So I have that open here and you can see um, I can click around and select these logos. It's nice because you can select these swatches as well for when you start adding some color and other elements into your layouts. So um, from here, we're going to want to create a new file. So we'll go to File New. You want to make sure that your layout is eight and a half by 11 inches and inches is very important here. You want to make sure you select inches. Sometimes people select points. Um, sometimes they select pixels. Those are way too small. So be sure you select inches here. Now you'll notice there's bleed settings here. I like to have these just so I know how far my images can bleed outside of my edges. Um, this is important in commercial printing because there is a trim process. So if you were actually sending this to a printer to be printed, you want to make sure you have this bleed set up. This isn't a requirement for this assignment, but it is kind of a nice to know thing, especially if you're going into graphic design. Um, this is just a, a nice um, industry standard. So this 0.125 inches is a good standard for a bleed. You'll want to make sure you have your color mode set to CMYK for print and then the raster effects at 300 PPI. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create here. And you'll notice this red guide. This is where your bleed setting is. So um, essentially, this is where, you know, you want to have images go outside of. If they go out a little bit more, that's fine. But this is kind of the minimum area. And um, it's not something that you totally have to worry about here. Um, it's just kind of, like I said, a nice to know industry standard setup. So the other thing about Illustrator is that um, you can't set up margins here. If you're familiar with um, Adobe InDesign, you can set margins in all of your documents. There's kind of a workaround here that I like to do. And margins, I really feel, are important just because um, you want to make sure you have enough room around your edges um, for that trim process. And one thing I always tell students is to make sure you're not, you know, setting your logo, you know, right here, basically, where it has um, the potential to get cut off. You want to make sure you have a lot of breathing room around the edges. So I like to set up these margins just so, you know, I know where um, my elements should be. So I'm just going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to click here. I'm going to add an eight and a half 
by 11 rectangle. So same as my document size. And then I will horizontal align and then vertical align. So it's just aligned with my layout. If you're not seeing these up here, you can always go to workspace and I have mine set up to typography. You can try any of these, um, but once you create a vector object, you should see this um, up here at the top. So from here, we're going to go to object path and we're going to offset a path from this rectangle. So make sure you have your rectangle selected. I'm going to make it negative 0.5 inches. So I think that's probably a pretty good margin. So this is what it should look like. If you have preview selected, you'll be able to see where that path is. And if you hit OK, and now you go to View and Guides, you can make a guide. So select Make Guides, and you'll see how that set up a guide right here. And um, you can basically just take this rectangle you've created and delete that. And so if your guides aren't locked, if you're able to move them around, you can go to view guides and then mine are locked. But um, if I unlock it, you'll see I can select it and sort of move it around. I don't want that to happen. I want them to be locked. So I'm going to go to view guides and lock guides. So from here, we're going to go ahead and create our first layer. So um, we do have one layer already created and we can use that basically as our background layer. So I always like to rename these layers just so I know exactly what is on each layer. So I'm gonna rename this background. And from here, you're basically just gonna add a rectangle of color and I'm going to take it right out to those bleed lines. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure there's no stroke. And we're just going to choose any color here. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, just any color for right now, because essentially you will be changing this. This will be kind of shaping up. You might add a full page background image here. You might add, um, you know, some gradients with, um, your brand colors, you know, there's a whole lot of things you can do here, but for this, we're going to keep it pretty simple, just any color. The next step is your vector logo. So I'm going to add, just clicking here, creating a new layer. I'm going to add a logo layer and rename it. And here is where the style guide comes in handy. So let's say I want to use this full color logo. I'm going to go ahead and copy it and paste it and you want to make sure that logo layer is selected when you paste so if you wanted to resize this logo you hold the shift key and let's say i want to have it centered i'm going to move it up to the top if you don't hold the shift key when you are resizing it you'll notice it stretches the proportions get all warped. So that's something that you definitely want to do is hold the shift key as you resize. And then the third layer is going to be your masked image. So I'm going to go ahead and create that new layer here and we'll rename it. And then we'll go ahead and import your masked image. Now it can be your PSD file. That's fine. So we're going to go to file place and I'm going to go ahead and find my masked image and place it in on that layer. And then of course you can hold the shift key and resize it. Basically kind of put it where you think it's going to be within that layout. So you sort of want your elements to be, you know, kind of where you think they're going to be in your layout. And as you, you know, you might find as you start adding imagery 
and text um, that you move them around and that's that's not a big deal the one thing that i do want to point out though is with your imported image you want to make sure you embed your image so in your links panel if you're not seeing your links you can go to window links and that should open it up click on this little menu here and embed your image and this is kind of an important step um, so the options here should be fine and I'm going to hit okay. And that just makes it so that the image, um, I don't have to have a link to view the full, um, resolution image. A lot of times students will upload without doing that and I can see their image, but it's usually kind of pixelated and not full quality. So that's a very important step that I want to make sure you're aware of. Um, just, you know, if you see that from me in comments in the rubric, that's why you want to make sure that that image is embedded. And this is basically what you need for this assignment. So you're just going to want to save it as an Illustrator file. So I'm going to save it in my folder. As an AI hit save and continue and that is what you are going to upload to um, the assignment area so your final submission for this assignment should be a layered eight and a half by eleven Adobe Illustrator file showing the three required layers as described previously the logo and the image should be sized and positioned to serve as a basic framework for the continuing development of magazine ad roughs in module three. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know.